Welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura, and I'm here today to continue exploring our theme of uh, aviation intertwined with living out your faith and vocation and seeing aviation as a calling on your life. And we're here with Pete Haywish, who is a Laterno grad. He's currently flying as an airline pilot in the United States, and we're going to just start off with this question. How do you, as a current airline employee, how do you go about living out your faith and what you're doing every day? It's a really good question, but I'll answer that with one word, authentically. I know that's a word that's really a cliche in modern Christianity today, but I believe that's because we've lost the deeper contextual meaning to that word. It's gravitas. You know, the Lord brings to my mind an actual event from when Jesus walked the earth. And I'm talking about a man that the disciple John relayed to us in his ninth chapter. He was a son born blind, and then received a sight from Jesus, which invoked deep within his heart a conviction, a belief, um, that Christ was who he said he was. And why? Because he beheld the supernatural truth and power of Christ, having a real effect on his present reality. You know, this once born blind son didn't have to hypothesize whether Christ was real. Um, he didn't have to have this, he didn't have to emotionally psych himself into a belief something happened. He was changed. Mm -hmm. And when the Pharisees questioned him, hostily on my dad, yeah. uh, he just told him simply what the Lord had done for him. I mean, there was a genuineness, an honesty, a naturalness. He was authentic. His testimony was enthusiastic and it wasn't forced and it wasn't a facade. Well, why? Because the Lord had met him. He had an encounter. He was first-person witness. It was his story. How could he deny what had actually happened to him? So, yeah, he met the real Jesus. And so it's I connected to what the Apostle Paul said clearly to us, that God has made himself plainly evident to us. Having this encounter with the real Jesus is really not complicated. It's nothing more than just seeing him, meeting him, beholding him for who he says he is. And thereafter, then we observe his consistent character, his changelessness, his faithfulness. And then we get to see his immovable, immutable love and care over our needs, our present reality. He tangibly meets it every single day. So this absolute um, abstract God that at one point maybe didn't make sense now becomes the Savior who, out of nothing but a deep longing for this relational eternal wholeness and oneness with us reached out and took firm hold of us. Um, this is something that, you know, once you've encountered Jesus, he becomes inexorably intertwined in our life's narrative. It becomes who we are. It's the foundation of our identity. And that makes our testimony inescapable because we can't intellectually dismiss something that actually happened to us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So meeting the real Jesus puts this eagerness on our lips so that when we go out and we share our story and our testimony, it's always consistent and it's always authentic. Why? For the same reason the son's parents gave to the Pharisees. Well, why are you asking us? Go ask him. Who better can relate to you what happened than the one to whom it happened? See, for him it was personal. It was undeniable. So it really boils down to this encounter is all about who we've met. It's not about us. Who we are is about who we've met. And a faith like that is going to be lived out really the same way across any career path. But I do argue in the airline industry, it's going to be much more visible when you consider the numerous people that we run into every day, whether it be crew members or passengers. So in that respect, I would say it's lived out much more uh, readily and visibly in the airline industry. Okay. And I want to circle back to that, too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but first I want to just ask, because you travel a lot, I imagine, mm -hmm. uh, how do you, how have you found to keep connected with your church, with God, with all this travel mm -hmm. that you're getting to do? That's Maybe really getting to do or <laughs> having to do, I don't know, depending yeah. on how you feel about it. Yeah, you know, that is a really good question. And I, you know, if I could just use a simple term, it's prioritizing. It's it's being um, making Jesus, that encounter, my priority. It's okay. walking with him being my everyday priority. Mm -hmm. And 
and happily so. I mean, he's become personal to me. So, yeah, I'm absolutely wanting to give that time. Now, I will confess, and all of you I'll confess, when I was here at Letourneau, I really didn't have a great discipline in my yeah. daily quiet time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was yeah. sleeping and studying and, and really not getting much, uh, as much time as I would like to have gotten in. Right. But now, uh, especially that I've been walking with the Lord for better than than 20 plus years, I now, whether I'm home or away, I am carving out time to spend learning about my Savior and conversing with Him. Um, you know, I, I do confess there are times within my busy work and sleep schedule, if I've got a real small layover, I might not be spending more than five or ten minutes with the Lord each day. But I really cannot, I don't think I could count on one hand how many times I've completely missed an entire day mm -hmm. worth of um, uh, spending time with Him. Um, now, beyond that, what's been really nice is as my seniority has climbed in the company, I've been able to schedule my Sundays off so I can have time of worship and, and things with my families and friends. But even if not, I've been able to find Sundays that uh, uh, where I can have a layover, where I can meet up with family or friends and worship with them okay. and still make Christ my priority when it comes to my Sunday time. And of course, one of the things, yeah, I never was great at playing an instrument, but one I've always enjoyed, which is my voice. Mm -hmm. So as I'm able, I also participate in my church choir. Okay. Um, beyond even just the singing, the Lord has been gracious to uh, deepen my faith, because in those choir times as well, there's deep fellowship with other believers. And, I, you know, I will thank the Lord till the day I die for always providing an opportunity and a means and a way to have that fellowship because I will tell you as um, as a developing Christian here at Laterno and and at my age now I'm 43 it the reality is fellowship is crucial in our faith walk so it's um, it's very important but again I love to see how the Lord has always provided it and it sometimes come through my crew members mm -hmm. so it's great so you're talking about crew members. Mm -hmm. I have heard that sometimes it's difficult maybe to share your faith. Challenging. Well, on the job, challenging, right. Yeah. So have you been able to do this? Or how, how, why, how not? Why yeah. Not, whatever, whatever. You know, if I may, let me answer that with a question. Maybe it's just me, but why does it seem that there's an increasing hostility toward Christ and those who follow him? My personal belief is it's because humans don't like being sold. They want to discover the reality of Jesus on their own. They want to be able to um, observe and see and see Christ lived out. You know, so in that sense, this really circles back to what I said at the beginning. It's about authenticity. People are really hungry to see if life can be lived out, and if so, how is it lived out well? And if they like what they see, then they will assume and acquire that life on their own. But again, that's their decision. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So how do we do this practically? Well, it's no different than the blind son. I mean, let me ask you, what's the difference whether I share about my story about Jesus and what he's done in my life, maybe even done on that particular day? Mm -hmm. How is that any different than when we share with people about our recent activities and interactions with our wife or husband or children or family? I mean, we talk about the latter every single day. We don't bat an eye and people listen. Well, why? It's because it's reality wrapped in conversation. We're interacting just as we're interacting right now. There's, there, again, there's an authenticity. There's a genuineness there. So how then, you know, when we talk about sharing with uh, our lives and our, our testimony about what Jesus has done in our life, um, that really isn't forcibly trying to sell anything. Right. In reality, it's just sharing, but at the same time, we're actually uh, testifying and giving witness to God's power and His working in our lives. So we're actually we're doing what we need to be doing, but in a non-hostile mm -hmm. uh, avenue and in a non-hostile way. So one of the ways for me is as far as living it out practically, is just letting the Spirit move me. I'm listening to his quiet nudge say, Hey, Peter, 
you need to say something here or talk. And again, for me, it's natural because it happened to me. But then it's the Lord's moving, which means he's also prepared their hearts. Mm -hmm. So there's been many a times where I have shared um, what Christ has done on the day or in my life or in the past or in the present over a meal with my crew members, been on a layover. Sometimes we have an hour or two between flights. No one else is on the airplane. We're just sitting waiting for people to board. And here I am talking to him again. And none of us, I'll tell you in the airline industry, if you ever go that route, we don't like unscheduled delays. But those have been opportunities that the Lord has used to present um, the uh, possibility for me to share. So, you know, I cannot, I would be ignorant if I were to, de to deny what the Lord has done uh, and done through me, just being me, just giving witness like that blind son. And only for the sake of boasting in the Lord, but I've lost count of how many people the Lord has touched through me. I mean, even to the point of tears. He gets all the glory and credit for that. But that's what happens when it's natural, mm -hmm. when it's real. Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about the authentically sharing who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody can do that. Yeah. And so I think that, yeah. that really resonates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you seen the airline industry as a whole be hostile to people of faith? Have you encountered difficulty working <laughs> as a Christian in the industry or, you know, can you share? Yeah. Not, not, not naming names or anything. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. No, you know, going in, I actually thought I, I, I expected that from mm -hmm. kind of what you were hinting at earlier is you kind of heard you it's been challenging. Stuff. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. And you know, in my previous job too, and just being in our present day culture, I was like, Ooh, you know, all these rules and regs, I bet you this. I've actually not found it hostile. Um, in fact, well, let me put it this way. It's not any more hostile than our present culture okay. would be yeah. hostile to Christianity. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anything, though, I would argue it's probably less hostile. If you think about the schedule and the lifestyle, I personally have observed the lifestyle and schedule, if not... Uh, creates a um, potential, but I've seen the reality of it creating a lot of brokenness. And a lot of that, to be real frank and honest with all of you, it is a difficult industry for relationships. Mm -hmm. um, now, if the Lord's calling you, there should be no hesitation. But in that sense, I've seen the soil actually be very ripe for planting, for watering and for a great, enormous harvest for the Lord. So if anything, I would argue this is a tremendous, tremendously large mission field, mm -hmm. and one that people are eager. Like I said earlier, I've had crew members crying because of how the Lord met them in a particular moment. So, yeah, it's uh, is it hostile? No. But is it ripe? Absolutely. The opportunities are there. Absolutely. Yeah. Every single time. And so... Ultimately, if you want to talk about why is it not hostile, maybe perhaps maybe it's just not been hostile for me. It's because if we're mutually respectful to one another, and yet you're not shy about sharing your testimony, which honestly, if you've encountered the real Jesus, you're not going to be shy about it. Then there really, I've not noticed any difficulties, either living out my faith or sharing Christ as he's moved. That's, that's great to hear. I'm very encouraged by yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for being here You're on welcome. our interview today. You're welcome. And I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me. I've every every opportunity I have to pour into y'all and into the lives of the eternal, I'm more than happy to. So great. thank you, Laura. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you.